Joining the Air Force gives you extraordinary career opportunities. It gives you that opportunity to continue your education if you don't have the means for it. Also, traveling, seeing the world, and just advancing within our wonderful ranks of the Air Force. What inspires somebody to join the United States Air Force is they just want to change. They want to challenge, and education is a big thing, where right now maybe not a lot of people can afford to go to college. The basic qualifications to enlist. First, we go over and evaluate your medical conditions. Height and weight is a very big deal because the Air Force has standards as far as, according to your height, what your weight should be in order to join. Also, tattoos. You cannot have more than 25% of the exposed body as far as tattoos go. So you can't have any on your neck, on your face, and, and so on. Law violations, if it's anything other than traffic violations, it's a case-by-case -case situation where we gotta look at what exactly happened. What's covered in the ASVAB practice test is math, reading, word knowledge, arithmetic. It, as long as they do well in the practice test, then we can start talking to them as far as scheduling them for the real ASVAB and, and taking them to MAPS. So that 680 form, it's a request for examination, and that's what they need to take with them to, to take the, the ASVAB, which is going to count. One of the more time-consuming tasks is filling out your background investigation on a Form SF-86. We'll give you a packet to take home so you can fill in all the information about where you lived, where you've worked, people who are references, etc. with the help of your parents. It's very important that you fill out the form accurately. So after the ASVAB, we go over their scores. So we show them in each section how well they did. So that'll determine what jobs they qualify for. This is just based off of their scores. The ASVAB test is extremely important because that's the very first step in joining the Air Force. It stands for Armed Services Vocational Aptitude Battery. Basically what that is is to see how well you are academically. So it covers a number of sections like mechanical, electronics, math, reading. MEPS is not the only place you can take the ASVAB test. You can actually take the test while you're in high school. You can take it as a junior, as a senior, and that test is valid for two years. That way you're, you're one step ahead before actually processing. During the pre-MEPS brief, we cover a lot of things. One of them being all your paperwork, especially your SF-86, because that's going to start your background investigation. So you need to make sure everything's perfect to the T. We also ensure that you know what's going to go on the day of the MEPS uh, processing, what to wear, and just what to expect so you're good to go. So where do you go for MEPS? It's where you're located. There are MEPS stations all over the country. So it's up to your recruiter and where you are as to where you go. The day of MEPS is extremely busy because you start off early in the morning, as early as 5.30 in the morning. If you're staying at the hotel the night before, the Air Force actually pays for your hotel stay. They pay for your dinner at night and then your breakfast in the morning and you'll take a shuttle to MEPS. So you'll see doctors, they'll ask you questions in regards to your past, your present. They draw your blood, do your analysis tests, and check your height and weight, which is very important. Can you read it for me, please? It's kind of like a sports physical, where they'll check your vision, your hearing, your joint coordination. Once you're done with the medical floor, you go on to the job counseling, and that's where you make your list of job choices based off of what you're qualified. And your aptitude area, which could be mechanical, electronics, admin, or general. Material management, right? As a recruit, you would have to make a list of job choices based off of what you're qualified for and you would have to choose an aptitude area as well. When you make your, your list of job choices, we make sure that you're completely comfortable with it. And of course, it all comes down to what the Air Force needs. And once you book that job, then that's pretty much the job that you'll have for the beginning uh, portion of your career. There's always a chance for you to cross train into different fields. The process for background screening, that's actually where the SF-86 comes into play, where they're going to check your law violations, your drug history, where you live. And that's why we ask every recruit that they let us know the truth from the very beginning, because while they're doing the background check, we will find out. And once you're cleared from that, then you go over to swear into the delayed enlistment program. The oath of enlistment is a very proud moment because at that time is when, in my eyes, you actually feel like it's all coming into reality. All that hard work that you've been going through to get you there, you're about to join the United States Air Force and your friends and family are there to support you. So when you raise your right hand and, and repeating after the commanding officer, it really means a lot to you because you're taking that step to change your life and your future. Congratulations, guys.
It makes you feel like you've already accomplished a great deal in your life. There's a, there's a big change. Uh, you get like butterflies in your stomach. You might even get teary-eyed because you know you're taking that step into serving your country in the United States Air Force. The delayed entry program is basically a program that you're in until the day you ship out to basic training. Right now it is taking about four to six months on the average to, to send somebody off for basic training. The number one thing is to stay motivated. If you can stay busy as well, going to school, working, that way you're, you're not getting caught up in anything else that might get you into some trouble. Our job as a recruiter is to keep everybody qualified. Make sure you don't have any law violations, stay physically fit. If you're not already physically fit, then as a recruiter, we'll, we'll try to help them get there. The running, the push-ups, the sit-ups. Because you have to maintain that height and weight standard for the Air Force. If you don't maintain that weight, unfortunately, you, you can get to the point where you get canceled. Your recruiter will give you a list of things that you will need. Just, just pretty much getting the toiletries and clothes because you'll be getting your uniforms two, three days after you get to basic training and they'll provide everything. So you don't need anything more than a backpack. And believe me, when you get there and you start putting your bag down, picking it back up when your TI tells you to do that type of stuff, you don't want to have a lot of stuff in there. The day they ship out, we, we do everything we can to, to pump them up because that's, that's the day that they need to go up to MEPS and swear in and, and take off. During our visits for the Delayed Industry Program every 30 days, we cover basic training, our ranks of enlistment, all these things that are going to help them while they're at basic training. You already are a step ahead by knowing all this stuff. We cover all those things so you're not so nervous. I mean, naturally you're going to be nervous, but just knowing the unknown is, is a good feeling. <laughs>